Picture the scene. It's 1991. Your older brother has taken you to the cinema to see the new Star Trek movie. Pre-internet, your only knowledge of what's to come is from trailers you've seen before other movies. And now you're sitting with popcorn and a drink, wondering why the title sequence is so long, so boring, and even though Netflix skip titles option won't be invented for 30 years, you find yourself frantically looking at the bottom right corner for it. And then... Wow, that's so iconic. We'll never see that used again. Hey, and welcome to Making FX. If your 90s movie has any scenes in space, then it's a fair bet when the explosion happens, you'd see a ring explosion. Even special edition movies. And visual effects people? Physics would definitely like a word. But I can't get too mad, because they look super cool. But how to pull them off in After Effects is a bit tricky. Some of the older tutorials for AE show you how to create a 2D version, which gives you a lot of control, except you have to keep the angle of the ring quite high. I figured out a way to generate a 3D version using CC Particle World. But I wasn't sure which is the better option, so I put it to a vote on my community page. Don't worry, if you prefer the 2D version, I'm going to show you both in this video. Then maybe you'll tell me in the comments below what you think of each. Fun fact, the original explosion is a 2D animation, created in Photoshop, and texture mapped onto the expanding discs. Turns out the artists as ILM are just way more talented than me. For the 2D version, in your comp, create a new solid by going to Layer, New, Solid. Make it 2000 by 2000 pixels and black. We might not need it to be black, but later on when we add a wipe, I don't want any colour blending to happen. Now go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Turbulent Noise. It's an optimised version of Fractal Noise. Set the type to Dynamic Twist and invert it. Set the contrast to 180 and drop the brightness to minus 35. Expand Transform and uncheck Uniform Scaling. Set the width to 20 and the height to 135. Now let's animate this. Typically I'd use a time expression on the offset, but I want to be able to tweak this easily. So instead, set a keyframe for the offset. Then move a second forward and change the Y value to minus 1000. This will get the noise moving up the screen. Now hold ALT and click on the offset stopwatch and type loop out with a capital O, brackets, quotes, continue, close quotes and brackets. This continues the animation in the same direction at the same speed. But now if I move the second keyframe, it becomes easy to adjust the speed, should I need to. Next, hold ALT again and click on the Evolution stopwatch. And I don't need to worry about adjusting this, so I'll type time times 150. Actually, just before we're done, expand subsettings and increase the influence to 80. OK, next go to Effect, Transition, Linear Wipe. Set the angle to 0, and the feather to 24. I've left the completion at 0 because you can't see it in my HD comp. It's off screen, so we'll adjust it later. For now though, make sure the effect is selected, then go to Edit, Duplicate. Set the wipe angle to 180, and the feather to a massive 230. Next, go to Effect, Generate, CC Light Sweep. And again, this is going to be in the wrong place for now but set the angle to 90, the width to 110, and the intensity to 100. This will eventually become our leading edge. To make this all make sense, go to Effect, Distort, Polar Coordinates. Make sure it's set to Rectopolar, and set to the maximum 100%. OK. Back on Linear Wipe 1, set the completion to 7%. And that is our leading edge, with a softer outer edge. For Linear Wipe 2, set it to 78%. So we've now lost our white light. In CZ Light Sweep, click on the Y value of the center property and drag it all the way down. And position it right on the edge. And we get this. 
If I adjust the offset keyframe as we said at the start, I can now speed up or slow down the flames. Now make your layer a 3D layer, and use the rotation controls to arrange it in space. Then on the first keyframe, tap S to expose the scale property, and set a keyframe to 0%. Then move forward in time, and expand scale until the ring is passed beyond the frame. And you can always fade out the layer if the back edge is taking too long to disappear. To colour the ring, go to Effect, Colour Correction, Tritone. And set the mid-tones to whatever colour you expect a physically impossible explosion to be. And just before we look at the 3D... Oh, you skipped ahead. It wasn't going to be a sponsor message, it's just a like request. And on to the 3D version. Let's start with a new comp. And a new comp size solid. And before we add CC Particle World, let's go to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. And hit Enter and rename this to Particle Amount. And set the value to 100 for now. We're going to be setting keyframes for the number of particles, but this allows us to adjust the number without having to reset. Now go to Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World. Hold Alt and click on the birth rate stopwatch. Then pick whip the particle amount slider, then type times value. So instead of 2, we now have 200. Set the birth rate to 0 for now with a hold keyframe, which you can do by tapping H. Set longevity to 5 seconds. Expand producer and zero everything out. We'll start at a point rather than a sphere of particles. And normally, I'd also link the location to a 3D null. I've got a tutorial on how to do this, but we are going to end up using this as a precomp, so I'm skipping that step. In physics, set the type to jet sideways. Actually, let's start to see this in action. At one second, set a birth rate keyframe to two. Tap H to reset the keyframe from hold. Then 10 frames later, drop the amount to zero. So we get a burst of particles which then drop off. Back at the one second mark, zero extra. And set keyframes for resistance and extra. Then at the corresponding one second and 10 frames, which if you hold down shift while scrubbing your snap to, set keyframes for resistance to 0.2 and for extra to 0.1. Now leave velocity at one, but zero out gravity and extra angle. We can't really see what's going on. So go to layer, new, camera, and angle it to get a better view. There we go. Collapse physics and expand particle, and change the type to faded sphere. Set the birth size to zero and the death size to one and expand the opacity map and fill in the left hand side. Make sure you have the pointer selected to do this. At the one second mark on the timeline, set a keyframe for the birth color to be white and change this to black 10 frames later and set the death color to black. Finally for CC Particle World, set the transfer mode to screen. There's not enough particles going on so set the particle slider to 400. But when I play this back, it's all a bit static. Let's change that. But to do so, we have to do something a little weird first. Go to Composition, Composition Settings, and set the height of the comp to match the width. In my case, 1920. Then go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. This makes a square adjustment layer instead of a rectangular one. Now change the comp back to your original values. Next, use the ellipse tool. Double click it to add a circular mask to the layer. So now we have a circular mask on our adjustment layer. Make it 3D and set its X rotation to minus 90. So it's in the same plane as the particles. Now go to Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace. Hold Alt and click on the Evolution stopwatch and type time times 300. 
So now we have a truly weird situation. At the one second mark, set a scale keyframe for the layer to 0%. And at the one second and 10 frame mark, scale up the layer so that the mask edge lines up with the particles. And then use that same loop out continue expression we use for the 2D version. And let's soften this. First, by double tapping the M key, which exposes the mask properties, and set the feather to 100. And then go back into the turbulent distort effect, and holding Alt, click on the size stopwatch. We're going to drive the size of the noise using the layer's scale. So type linear brackets and use the pick whip to link to the layer's scale property. Just the first value. Comma zero, comma 200, comma one, comma 20. So as the layer increases in scale from zero to 200%, increase the noise scale from one to 20. Okay, all that's left to do is add the tritone effect to set the colors. If you check out the project in the description, you'll see that for a fiery look, I also added a glow. To set the angle of the ring, in the camera's transform properties, you just adjust the Z rotation. And if I position the camera so that it's almost edge on and reduce the number of particles back to 100, you see a lot of detail in the leading edge. Adding this to your space scene, which might have its own 3D camera will be fine, so long as you don't use the collapse transformation option. In which case the main comps camera will override the pre-comps and you could lose the rotation or the adjustment layers distortion. And then just add a lens flare. Keyframe the brightness to flash on and fade out. But if you're not sure about the ring at the back being so visible, take a look at CC Particle World's extras. Expand that, and then expand Depth Q. Switch it to Fade, and this measurement is CC Particle World's own. Two roughly corresponds to twice the width of the comp. So when the particles are 4,000 pixels away from the camera, they'll be invisible. And for the explosive debris, I used one of the stock ones in Particle Illusion. If you don't know about this great resource, check out my review, linked below. To match the double ring from Star Trek VI, I used particles for the outer ring, but for the particle type, I used a textured disc to add a bit more detail as it was on screen longer. So that's it. Do you agree with the original poll? Or now that you've seen both, would you just try to get away with the 2D version? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in recreating other iconic looks from Star Trek, check out this playlist.